Good morning and welcome to worship for Sunday, January 31st. The church season of Epiphany is the part of the church year when we learn about Jesus. The scripture lessons are chosen to give us proofs that Jesus is God's son. We heard one proof last week when we saw the power he had to make Simon the fisherman leave his business and his other responsibilities to follow Jesus. This week, we are witness to Jesus making the claim that he is Lord of the Sabbath, a powerful and amazing thing for him to say, as well as his demonstrating his ability to heal. I invite you now to turn in your worship folder for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 413, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, hymn number 413. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent from heaven above, be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord of the Sabbath, your followers were told not to work on the Sabbath, and yet they boldly plucked grain to show that you are Lord of all. The world tells us not to rest on the Sabbath. Show us how to rest boldly, rejecting conventions that go against your will, and instead praying and resting as you did upon the mountain for the glory of your word and work, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Scripture reading is from Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard cannot know. The stupid cannot understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For your enemies, O Lord, for your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my enemy evil assailants. Your righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. The scripture is from Luke chapter 6. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciple plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered, Have you not read that David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at them, he said to them, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Here ends the reading.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're currently in the church season of Epiphany, and the purpose of the Bible lessons that we read during this season is to shed light on the identity of Jesus. Another way to think about it is that it provides evidence that Jesus is truly the Son of God. For instance, last week's scripture text pointed out that Jesus was a charismatic teacher that attracted crowds, crowds so large that he had to sit in a boat to teach. Following his lesson, he went fishing with Simon, the professional fisherman who had caught no fish overnight. Much to Simon's surprise, they caught so many fish that the catch filled two fishing boats. And finally, we talked about how there was something about Jesus that caused Simon to cast aside all of his family and business responsibilities to follow Jesus. Yes, there truly was something about Jesus. We continue this week with more evidence that Jesus is truly God's son. Only this time, the assertions are much bolder. Jesus may have dis demonstrated his authority in earlier parts of the gospel, but today's text makes the claim explicit. He is upping the ante. There are two occasions in our reading when Jesus demonstrates his authority and ability to interpret script scripture. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples are walking through grain fields. In and of itself, that act of walking may have been stretching the limits because you could only walk a certain number of steps on the Sabbath or you were violating Sabbath restrictions. In this case, the disciples were hungry and grabbed heads of grain, rubbed off the chaff and started to eat. But these actions were viewed as harvesting and that was specifically prohibited for the Sabbath. Now, the original intent of both restrictions was to provide a day of rest for all people, including slaves who might not otherwise get a day off, ever. When questioned about his disciples' actions, Jesus cites an, obs an obscure story from the Torah about David and then makes two audacious claims. When it is a matter of sustaining life, it is far better to harvest and eat than to die from starvation. That's the first claim. And the second is that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, Jesus is Lord, and he has the authority to make decisions about what is permissible on the Sabbath. Jesus is not only audacious, he is bold. The second occasion that is described again occurs on the Sabbath. This time, Jesus is in the synagogue and teaching. The text tells us that scribes and Pharisees, in other words, the religious elite, were there and they were watching him. They were becoming increasingly uncomfortable with his claims, his interpretation of scripture, and his assert assertion of authority. This is usually how it works, you know. Those who have power are afraid of losing it and watch, waiting for a lapse with the upstart so that they can pounce. Now, Jewish teaching was very clear that while protecting the Sabbath was important, saving human life overrules any claim to protect Sabbath. And the religious elite knew this. Jesus, knowing that he was being watched, goes on the offensive by asking a man with a withered hand to come forward. He then provokes those religious people who are watching him by reminding them of their own teachings. He asks, is it lawful to do good or do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? Now, the scholars know the answers to these questions, but Jesus' question sits squarely in the middle of a debate that is occurring among them. How important is protecting the Sabbath? How important is saving another person's life? How does one prioritize? When has someone gone too far toward protecting the Sabbath or gone too far toward saving a human life? They're all good questions, and they're all worthy of debate. 
To think about it in a slightly different way, Reverend Kendra Mohn wrote, who gets to deviate and why? The answers that come out of the story for today uh, have to do with authority and purpose. First, calling himself Son of Man and Lord, Jesus claims authority over the Sabbath. This not only asserts Jesus' authority, but reminds any of us who is listening of God's authority. Humans are merely stewards of the practices and institutions given by God. And those human institutions that resist Jesus' ministry, including healing on the Sabbath, act contrary to God's purposes in the world. Further, Jesus uses his power in the second story to heal a man's hand. This command over physical health, done in full view of his critics, puts Jesus' power on full display. This is done in the context of teaching, itself a sign of authority, and the healing is accompanied by a pointed question that is not answered by his audience. All of these elements underscore the authority of Jesus. And that's the primary point of today's lesson. Who is Jesus? Jesus has the authority to interpret scripture and to answer in a decisive way the intent of God. Jesus has the power to heal, and he isn't concerned about whether that healing occurs on the Sabbath. In another place, Jesus says the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. Sabbath was created so people could rest. Sabbath was created so that bodies could be rejuvenated or restored. Sabbath was created to provide a space to gather for worship, prayer, and the study of scripture. But above all else, Sabbath was intended to be life-giving. Jesus makes his point with action. He heals the man with the withered hand. In doing so, he makes clear that when the rules become so strict that they deny life to another person, the rule enforcer has stepped beyond God's intent for all people to have life and have it abundantly. As we move through the season of Epiphany and approach the season of Lent, our scripture readings provide us assurances of Jesus' power and authority. Jesus is the ultimate interpreter of God's intent for us and for our world. Jesus is the one that we follow, and remember, we will be following him all the way to the cross. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn, uh, to turn into your worship folder. We are going to sing um, the Confession of Faith. It's called "I Believe." Um, and we will sing all five verses.
Let's spend a little time in prayer. Sisters and brothers, our baptismal vows call us to compassion and mercy on behalf of those in need. We offer our prayers for the church and the world. We pray for the church and its leaders that we may be more concerned with proclaiming your grace and love than judgment and rule keeping. We lift before you today Holy Trinity Catholic Church of Goodhue and Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Haycreek. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the creatures of all shapes and sizes, that we may better protect and care for the good creation that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and for leaders of nations, that peace and justice may be the motivation of our actions instead of greed and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the lonely and depressed, that we may reach out in love to those who are experiencing pain that we cannot see. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and dying, that your healing will and comforting peace may be active in their lives. Today we pray for Scott Sorensen, Linda Thompson, Max Tilderquist, Jerry McRae, Eileen Anderson, Jeanette Larson, Paul Mickelson, Gloria Skoog, Lexi Piney, and Bob Krause. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for these this assembly, that we may go out into our daily lives proclaiming your reign and rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Courtney Hovel, Riley Munson, Josie Finney, Connor Heilengren, Chance Nelson, and Cynthia Gianoli, who celebrate birthdays this week. Bless them and keep them. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the saints who went before, that we may follow in their footsteps and proclaim your faithfulness through the generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you revealed your Son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by the same Spirit that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. Amen. Our generosity moment this day is a poem by Howard Thurman. It's called The Work of Christmas, and it goes like this. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. This, this is what we are called to do in the season of Epiphany, the work of Christmas by Howard Thurman. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds now for communion. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. A blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer our Lord taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to share in the body and blood of Christ. And as you do so, remember that it is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Our sending hymn for today is hymn number 634, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. We will sing verses 1, 4, 5, and 6.
we conclude our worship service for today with the blessing and the dismissal. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.